Where does your favorite offense rank in the tier list? Coming up. Hey coach, Coach Mackin here and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time visiting my channel. Let me tell you what's about football. So if you like that, you're going to love this because we are going to rank offenses. The air raid, the run and shoot, the single wing, the double wing, the wing T, the flex bone, and the power eye. We're going to be ranking all of those and we're going to be using a tier list. Now, if you haven't seen any of those videos, they're somewhere on YouTube. They're pretty popular. I thought it would be awesome to do one for the offenses that are usually run predominantly in football. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into it. Now, the first thing we have to do, though, is we have to use, or I have to show you what we're going to use as the icons or the pitchers for this tier list. So let's get into it. So first up, we have the air rate. Of course, it's Superman because the air rate is amazing and people love it. The next is the double wing. No explanation necessary. Darkwing Duck. Then we have the flex bone. Why? Because you can't tell me this does not look like Paul Johnson. If Paul Johnson was a Marvel villain, he would be the Green Goblin. Of course, you got the power eye. I don't need to explain this. You've got the run and shoot. You've got the single wing. And of course, you have the wing T. So let's go to the tier list. So here's the tier list. And we're going to start off because I believe in respecting my elders. We're going to start with the single wing. Pop Joe from Hey, hey Arnold. So what we're going to do is we're going to, where does he rank? Does he rank at the face melter, which is unbelievable. Everyone's talking about it on Coach Huey, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. Or is it an F all the way down where you will just fail if you have to run this offense? Now, before we get into it, if you want to see what the single wing looks like, let's look at some clips right now. All right, so here are some clips of the single wing in action. This is some school up in Massachusetts. They don't have a quarterback. They just run either power left or power right or anything like that. They have the spinner series. It is for teams that don't have a quarterback, that don't trust the pass, and that want to just run the ball all the time. So where would I rank the single wing in from face melter all the way to F? It gave Sean Payton problems when he was, you know, popping pills and and sitting up hit list and everything like that in New Orleans and he had to take a one-year break. So what I would do, though, I would rank this easily as a C. If I have to run something that's a gimmick contrarian offense, I would run the single wing because it is halfway decent and it's average. So I would put it at the C. Next up is the power I. This was the, the offense in the 80s and 90s. This is what Nebraska made its living on. And here is an example of what the power I looks like in case you're, you were born, you're a millennial and you were born after the 2000s and you have no idea when people say power I, you were thinking of something completely different. So here's an example. So here's an example of Nebraska running it against Penn State, as it says, 22 times power. You get in, a, you get in under center, fullback, tailback, you toss it out there, you let your best guy, who's usually the tailback, that's where he's at, just run the piss out of it. Again, this is, this is similar to the single wing, but you would run this if you have kind of a quarterback or a fullback that can, a quarterback that can throw the ball and a fullback that's kind of a bruiser, a blocking back, things like that, and you're just not comfortable just eliminating the quarterback position 100%. So that is why you would run the power I. Where would I rank it in the tier system though? Where would it be? Would it be a face melter? Can you do that? Well, yes. I mean, Nebraska way back in the 80s and 90s just destroyed people with the eye and actually made people want to run the eye for at least my high school career, but it's not there. It's not. Unless you have the athletes that Nebraska had back in the day where they're still reliving their glory days, I would not name it a face melter. In fact, I find that the eye lacks imagination, just lacks anything. It's not fun. It's something those pesky youth coaches run when they want to just show that they run a pro style offense so i would rank the power i as a d all right next up is the flex bone where would i rank the flex bone paul johnson that's the name that pops up into my head when i say flex bone i'm sure it's yours as well it gave uh him success at navy at georgia southern at georgia tech and many people think he should have been hired at kansas when that job popped open it is influential it is unbelievable and it's a little bit crazy just like the green goblin and norman osborne in the very first original uh, Spider-Man, if you don't believe me, tell me this gift doesn't give off the same energy. Does this gift not give off the same energy? 
So let's say, though, that you've never been introduced to the Flexbone. You've heard about it, but you've never seen cut-ups or anything like that. Well, this is what the Flexbone looks like when it's ran to perfection and is unbelievable. So let's go to the film. So here's what it looks like. It's under center. You've got motion. You're reading off of some person. You've got a pitch. You've got a pull. You've got stuff like that. It is very, very difficult. Difficult to defend when you haven't, when you don't see it. It's a neutralizer. I think of the flex bone as the air raid offense, but instead of throwing it forward, you're pitching it back because you are eliminating at least two people on the field. You're spacing the ball out and all of that stuff. So where would I rank it on the tier list? Where would I put the flex bone on here? Well, it's definitely not a face melter because every time people say on the internet a face melter, they never ever talk about the flex bone. Is it an A tier? It is, but you need to have a quarterback and B backs and a fullback, it's specifically a fullback. If you don't have a fullback, you can't really make the offense go. I think that hinders it a little bit because it, you need to have that player. Many people assume that you need a quarterback in order to make the flex bone go, which is not true at all. So it is not a C, D, or F. Definitely not. But I would put it as another C. It's an average offense if you don't have the people, but if you do have the people, it could be higher. So this is in between the B and C. I'm just sticking with the C. Next up is the double wing offense. What that is is a bunch of fat guys getting together and foot-to-foot -foot splits, and they, again, don't throw the ball. To me, the double wing is the bastardized cousin of the single wing. The reason why is because it passes just a little bit. It hasn't fully eliminated the quarterback, but it does use the quarterback for blocks and the spinner action and all of that stuff. That is why we are using dark wing duck. Where does this guy right here, this offense, where does it fall in all of this stuff? Well, if you first off, if you haven't seen what the double wing is, here are some highlights. So as you can tell right here, you've got everybody in the uh, in the box, right? There is nobody. Even the ref is like, what the hell is going on right here? But this is what the double wing looks like. Everybody is on there. It's three yards. You're playing in a foam booth, and you're hoping just to squirt out there. You use the quarterback as a blocking back. You just hand the ball off. The quarterback is now blocking. It's all 10 people blocking for 11 and you have the, the element of surprise when you actually throw the ball just a little bit. But, I mean, it's it's this. It's in a foam booth. We're going to make you play defensive uh, football, make you tackle us every single time, and we are going to wear you out. So where would I rank it? Where would I rank this offense at? I'm going to be completely honest. It's a B. It is a B. And hear me out. This is why. Because I played against the double wing in high school. I know what it's like to play. And it's a pain in the ass. You can't see anything. They're foot to foot. It's a wall. It's like the wall in Game of Thrones where you're just handed to it. And then you were just you just constantly run up against a wall over and over again. It beats you down physically, mentally. There's nothing you can game plan for because a lot of people don't see it. But there's also that element of surprise where they could pass it. They could get, they could pop one off on you, or they they do a, a quarterback sneak. No one sees where the quarterback is. Next thing you know, he's he's popped out there. So it is a beautiful offense that I would rank as a B. That's where I would put it at. Now the air raid, my my baby. Where would I put the air raid at? This is going to surprise a lot of people. Okay, because you would think that I would put this all the way at the top. Not true. But before we get into it, if you don't know what the air raid is, it is a four wide receiver set that has a limited playbook that you really don't change, and you just rep it over and over and over again. And it is something that has is one of the most pro prolific offenses in the history of college football, and it has trickled down into high school. A lot of teams have won state championships running the air raid, especially due to, and I know this is sacrilegious, Tony Franklin bringing it to the high school level, systematizing it and giving it away. And if you don't know what it looks like, the air raid offense looks like, let's look at the film. All right, so I'm bringing up the film my good buddy, Drew Piscopo. This was his school in North Carolina. They're running 92. That's mesh. There's a lot of things that you run, uh, certain air raid teams run. Mesh, four verts, Y cross, stick. Scissors is another concept. This is can shows that you can run this offense at the high school level, that it is very good. They've won a lot of games. I think Drew and them have won like championships three years in a row now, made it to the playoffs. They have a very small school. So this is what's a very good – I mean, look at this. Just ripped it. Boom. 
it works, especially at the high school level. And this is just a, a ragtag a ragtag group of guys. So where would I rank this at? Where would I where would I rank the air raid offense at? This is going to surprise a lot of people, but I would rank it as an A. It is not a face melter because it does have to have a couple of players. If you don't have those players, just like the flex bone, then you can't be able to run it. But this this offense. Hands down, one of the best offenses that you can run, that you can marry, that you can wifey, that you can just go all in on, that's why I love it. All right, now it's it's the run and shoot. Where do I put the run and shoot at? This is an offense that a lot that there was a shroud of secrecy around. You didn't really know anything. You didn't know if you went online if you were going to find the right stuff or it was just some schmuck that was making the information and just posting it online and having a laugh at it. You didn't know if you were going to get sued if you were talking about it on message boards or anything like that. There was this whole secrecy about the run and shoot until the run and shoot certified came out that is why i'm using deadpool in this because he the run and shoot mafia would kill you without a second chance to kill your career but also it was just hands down one of the the most explosive offenses in the world it turned the the detroit lions uh the atlanta falcons and a bunch of other slappy teams into winners just for a handful of seasons before it just disappeared and just dissolved like a very smelly fart so <laughs> <laughs> so where would I rank this? Well, first, before we do that, let's look at a couple of highlights, old school highlights of Mouse Davis, the godfather, when he was running this offense. I mean, right here is a Z60 go, and look at that. You're hitting the seam. It's, it's on the second level, and you're still throwing the ball. Why? Because that is what this offense is. It's crazy. It's like Deadpool. You've got bullets in the chambers. You're just you're you're talking trash. You're throwing the ball. You're being just unbelievable when you run this stuff. If things break down, you're going to roll out the the wide receivers have secondary routes wide open. You're just it's a wide open offense that if you run it right, you're always going to be in the game because you can score like that. You can be like Steph Curry shooting the threes. You're never out of it. So where would I rank this at? Where would I rank this offense at? Very simple. Face melter. All, I mean, of course, everybody knows that. Now, last but certainly not least, and if you know anything, you know that I have kind of come around to the wing tee. If not, you can either click here or here. A card will pop up where you can look at the pros and cons of the wing tee offense. The wing tee, to me, signifies really grumpy old men that hate passing the ball but like having a systematic approach to their offense. Um, that is why I used this as my tier pitcher for the wing tee. If you don't know what the wing tee is, let's look at some film so you can see some highlights of what it is. It's under center. It's kind of uh, a cross between the single wing, the double wing, and the flex bone. Let's get into some highlights. Here's some highlights from a team in California, I think. The running belly, the running trap. Didn't know where the hell the ball was right there. It has some deception mixed in with a power running game. It's for coaches that want to know where the ball's going, who's touching the ball, ball-controlled offense. It is a really, really good offense if you hate throwing the ball, but you want to be able to have a quarterback and everything like that. I mean, look at that. That's... That's unbelievable. That's the that's the belly keep dive, whatever it is, 271, shifting. It's a really good offense. So where would I rank it? Simple. This is a really simple where I would rank everything at. If you run it right, it can be unstoppable, but I can't stand the coaches that run it, so F.